All right, one of the biggest things that we hear from teachers that they struggle with, and perhaps this is you, is the following. How on earth do I fit it all in? And perhaps you're one of those teachers who has 45 minute class periods or 42 minutes or something ridiculous like that where you gotta cover all of the standards, right? And so how do you fit everything in? How do you teach reading, writing, grammar, etc.? And today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about four different things that you can start to utilize and implement in your classroom that's gonna help you meet the needs of being able to fit it all in and being more strategic with how you utilize your class time. So there are four things that we're gonna talk about today. So we'll put these up here like this. And the very first part that I wanna cover is how to utilize your class time effectively with a very specific type of resource or activity that you can do with your students. And those are bell ringers. And if you're familiar with our channel, you know that I've probably talked about this before in the past, but bell ringers are an incredibly helpful way to get in a lot of the standards that you need to cover with your students. So I want to give you an example with bell ringers. Let's say you want to make sure that you got to fit in, you know, Greek and Latin root words and things like that. Well, we could take class period, um, you know, certain class periods at one time to do that. We could do a week long unit on that. But do we really have the time to actually do something like that in our class? not really depending on the length of your class. And if we look at the standards, right, which we'll talk about in just a second, it might not necessarily be something that you should be spending that much class time on. So what we do instead is we teach concepts like that inside of our bell ringers. So our bell ringers that we've created at EB, and you can obviously do something similar for yourself, these are aligned to all of the ELA standards. So when we set out to create the bell ringers that we utilize with our teachers, is we have our teachers make sure that the bell ringers have all of the standards for fifth grade or all of the standards for sixth grade included in them. So let's say for some reason, there's one standard that you aren't able to get to in your normal curriculum for the year. At least you know that the bell ringers that you have that you're utilizing with your students are going to cover that, right? And a lot of times what we're doing with bell ringers is we're wasting those five, 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of class each day with kind of like a busy work activity, maybe like wacky word Wednesday or mentor sentence Monday or something like that. And I'm not knocking necessarily those practices if those work for you. Um, but we found a better use of bell ringers is ensuring that they really are connected to the standards that we have to teach in our classrooms. So for example, one day of our bell ringers might be focused on practicing justification with our students. And that gives students another day to practice this particular skill. So we're utilizing and harnessing those first five to 15 minutes of class, depending on how much time you set aside for your bell ringers to really make sure that we are making the most of that time to be covering the standards, right? To be fitting it all in, which is our, one of our biggest pain points. So that's the first one is utilizing bell ringers. Number two that we're gonna talk about is using the standards as your guide. And this is really interesting because what we found is in working with you know thousands of teachers and planning with them over the years is that we found that sometimes, more often than not, teachers are actually teaching something that they don't need to be including in their curriculum, right? Or what they'll find is they're teaching the same standard over and over and over again and kind of forgetting about these other ones over here. And this is really easy to happen, especially if we teach you know, novel units in a very specific way, or we have a specific framework that we're required to teach from our school. And a lot of the times what we'll find is if we actually sit back and look at the units that we're teaching, or we look at the specific um, activities that we're doing with our students, we're either one, covering a lot of the same standard over and over and over again, and kind of leaving these ones to the wayside, right? Which is not necessarily um, ensuring that we're covering all of the standards. Um, but what we'll also find is that some of the resources or activities or things that we're doing with our students actually aren't any of the standards. It's actually not hitting any of the standards that we need to cover for our students. So then we get to state testing and students haven't seen a particular concept. If we're utilizing the standards as our guide, that really helps to cut back on, you know, wasting class time on things that you don't necessarily need to be teaching. So that's number two is using the standards as your guide. All right. Now, number three is to batch plan. 
you know anything about our world, <laughs> you know that we are huge proponents of batch planning. There are so many different reasons why we feel that you should batch plan. Um, of course, there are limitations to this and with anything, right, it's a give and get of, of what it is that's actually gonna benefit you. But when we batch plan, when we're thinking about how do we fit in all of the standards that we need to cover throughout the entire course of a year, when we batch plan, we see it in front of us. Like we actually see that unfolding of, oh my gosh, I'm using the standards as my guide and I'm doing reading for literature standard 5.1 a hundred times this year, but I haven't even touched reading for informational text in this first semester of the year. You see that when you batch plan, you start to see those holes within your curriculum, right? That you're developing. Whereas opposed to if we don't batch plan, we kind of fly by the seat of our pants what I found when I was doing that back in my couple first years of teaching was all of a sudden it's Monday and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I teaching today? I don't even know what I'm covering. And then you scramble online and you fill it with something that isn't intentional. So when we batch plan, we get to be really intentional with all of the resources, all of the activities, all of the novel units, all of those things that we're doing with our students by also using the standards as our guide. So these two tie really heavily into each other. All right, and then the last thing that we suggest that you do for fitting it all in is spiral reviewing your lessons, your activities, your standards, and things like that. And the reason that we do spiral review, this is like math, right? In math, we're very familiar with this concept, but it's not really applied to ELA the way that we feel that it should be. And when we do this and we have our teachers do this, we see a huge return on investment of this time in doing this because students are able to consistently practice these skills over and over and over again, right? So I want you to think of like an analogy of working out or if you're a basketball player or something like that, right? The only way that you get stronger physically, let's talk about, you know, building muscle in the gym, we get stronger at the gym by doing the same exercises repeatedly not by constantly mixing things up and doing this over here and doing this over there and doing this over there and not having like a cohesive plan that spirals back those exercises that you've been doing. Same thing goes for an athlete, right? If we're practicing and we wanna get better and you know be the best team that we can be, we're not all just practicing dribbling in November and then practicing passing in December. No, we're doing it consistently. We're doing it all the time. And that allows us to develop a mastery of these specific skills. So English is not any different than that, right? We have to give students opportunity to spiral review certain concepts again and again throughout the school year. And that's where also, you know, the bell ringers come into play because these allow us to easily do that. But that's also where batch planning comes into play too, because we can start to see as we're planning things out where we have holes. Oh my gosh, I taught narrative writing in August, but I haven't touched narrative writing again until October. Like I gotta figure out a way to spiral review narrative writing in. And maybe as you batch plan, you put in a separate Friday that you're gonna do a special, you know, um, narrative writing activity where you're utilizing your bell ringers to support you in that capacity. But this spiral review is key, right? We cannot expect students to do one thing, one time for one skill or one standard and have mastery over it. That's simply not how life works, right? It's not how it works. So we really get to be cognizant of spiral reviewing our content with our students. So hopefully this helps you. Those are the four ways to fit it all in. Um, we talk about bell ringers, using the standards as your guide, batch planning, and spiral review. So hopefully this helps you. If it does, please share with a colleague. We would love to kind of spread the message of our belief here at EB and how we can support teachers in one of those biggest pain points that you guys have is, is how do we fit all of the standards that we need to cover in our ELA class periods. All right, make sure that you hit subscribe where you're watching this video and we will see you next week on the channel.